Hello everyone, hope you're having the most wonderful day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss more 90 Day Fiancé couples and reveal how they're doing now. Make sure to stick to the end because we have some surprising news for you guys. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Paul and Corinne Since the conception of 90 Day Fiancé, viewers have been introduced to a collection of relationships, most being toxic in nature. While Paul Stale and Corinne Martins were certainly a part of the list of unhealthy couples, they surprisingly had a happy ending. Their story began in the first season of 90 Day Fiancé before the 90 Days, and it would be an understatement to call their relationship rocky. Developing a Brazilian love interest, Paul attempted to obtain a K-1 Fiancé visa so that his partner could live with him in the US. The biggest issue though was that the pair had a massive language barrier which forced them to use translation devices in order to make communicating much easier. Although at certain points, this type of dynamic made things really awkward, especially when Paul had to reveal his criminal past to his partner. Corinne just sits there patiently next to him as he frantically types on his phone about how he committed arson, and it's just so uncomfortable. To make matters worse, at any side of conflict, Paul quite literally runs away from the situation, and it's pretty embarrassing to watch, to be honest. For a while after the show, the pair just ended things since Corinne accused her partner of domestic violence in SA. Things got so bad that the pair even filed restraining orders against each other, but things took an unexpected turn. Giving birth to their first child in March of 2019, they very recently delivered their second child on the 6th of last month. Both settled on living in Corinne's home country of Brazil since she only felt homesick living in America. Shocking just about everyone, Paul teased fans on Instagram that his wife might be opening her own OnlyFans. At the time, Corinne was heavily pregnant with her recent child, so many were concerned about how graphic the photos would be. Surprisingly, the account was launched for free, and Corinne was even asked by fans if she'd post videos of her and her husband getting intimate. After completely reconciling from the drama and allegations made in 2018, Paul announced that he would be producing a new documentary series on Corinne achieving her cosmetology dream. Despite having extreme highs and lows, the couple stuck it out which you have to give them props for. Mark and Nikki Justifiably dubbed as one of the creepiest couples to appear on 90 Day Fiancé, Mark and Nikki Shoemaker were featured in the third season of the show. From the very beginning, Mark, who at the time was a 58-year-old father of four from Baltimore, rubbed viewers the wrong way. Looking at himself in the mirror every morning saying things like, you're a specimen, it was quite uncomfortable having him on screen. On top of that, right before he meets with Nikki, his Filipino partner at the airport, he reveals that he also met his ex-wife in the Philippines 27 years ago. Though after he picked up Nikki at the airport, things began to become a whole lot cringier and weird. Treating the person who was supposed to be his partner like he would his children, their whole relationship felt incredibly wrong. Like how when she touched the windows of his car, he reprimanded her like he would his kids. Yeah, really weird. To make things even more awkward, Mark thought it would be a good idea to give Nikki a car that once belonged to his ex-wife. The look on her face when he revealed that piece of information was priceless. By the end of the third season, the couple got married, but Nikki certainly looked unsure about her decision, and we don't blame her. As mentioned in an article by Starcasm, the pair decided to sue TLC for portraying them in a negative light after the show aired. However, since they willingly signed the contract to be on 90 Day Fiancé, the judge quickly tossed the case into the trash. Tons of fans were expecting Mark and Nikki to at least defend themselves at one of the tell-alls, but it's only been radio silence for a while. Furthermore, Nikki's most recent social media post was back in 2013, but there isn't anything in recent times. A lot of people seem to comment on her photos asking if she's happy and well since they didn't get the best vibes from her husband. Mark, on the other hand, doesn't even seem to have an Instagram, but did post in January of 2016 on Facebook that Nikki and him vacationed to Hawaii. Aside from not being seen very much at all, some 90 Day Fiancé fans claim to have spotted the couple in public. In one instance, a Reddit user claimed that they saw the pair together at a Walmart in 2018, but that was the last time such a thing was reported. Ashley and Jay In the sixth season of the show, fans were introduced to Ashley Martson and Jay Smith, who quickly fell in love. While attending a wedding in Jamaica, Ashley met Jay, an aspiring tattoo artist who was 11 years younger than her. Soon after, Jay decided to move to America with his new lover, and they officially got married in May of 2018. Though from the very beginning, the relationship was very rocky, and within days of being husband and wife, Jay was caught pursuing other women on a dating site. Ashley also suspected that her husband had a wandering eye, which was completely correct since he was also caught having sex with a client at the barbershop he worked at. Following a list of wrongdoings, she finally decided to divorce Jay back in January of 2019, but that wasn't the end of their story. Regardless of the fact that Jay had a terrible track record with women, that didn't stop Ashley from taking him back on multiple occasions. For a while after the camera stopped rolling, the pair had a confusing on and off again relationship, so the drama between them pushed on. Unsurprisingly, after they were an item once again, Jay was accused of cheating and even impregnated another woman. 
This pattern of behavior hints at the idea that Jay only uses women for personal gain, which is extremely scummy. Shockingly, Ashley continued to play a pretty active part in Jay's life, going as far as to help him open up his own tattoo parlor that they called Jay Skin's Tattoo Shop. Finally, in September 2020, the couple decided to split up for good, putting an end to their two-year-long nightmare of a relationship. The biggest question we have is why did Ashley keep going back to this mess of a situation, especially since Jay was clearly using her? It seems like the answer isn't as clear-cut as we think, since she publicly expressed that the experience was embarrassing and painful. Why she would continue to accept a man who disrespects her on a consistent basis baffles us, but we're glad the toxicity is over. Steven and Olga An incredible amount of struggle has troubled Steven Friend and Olga Koshimbatova, who appeared in the sixth season of 90 Day Fiancé. Being one of the youngest couples to appear on the show, the pair were both 21 when they crossed paths. Olga, who was visiting the US all the way from Russia, bumped into her now husband Steven while they were on the beach. Not even two months after they started dating, Olga revealed that she was pregnant with Steven's child. Later deciding to return to Russia, Steven professed his love and proposed to his partner while accompanying her to her country. Then on, they started their 90-day K-1 visa journey, but were met with a ton of conflict and issues. Since the visa process was delayed, Olga was forced to stay back and give birth to her child alone in Russia. Supposedly, at the time, Steven had lied about applying for the visa for whatever reason, but when he finally did, they had to wait even more. Announcing some fantastic news via their Instagram stories, the couple revealed that their visa was approved and two months later in August, they were married. However, after unfollowing each other on Instagram in October of 2020, fans speculated that they went Splitsville. Soon after rumors started flying about their marital status, Steven confirmed that they were no longer together and would be better off as co-parents. To make the situation even worse, around a month after they broke things off, Olga was rushed to the hospital due to a severe UTI. Thankfully, she made it out of the situation just fine. The best part about this traumatic health scare was that it brought the couple closer together. But here's the kicker. Now the pair both seemingly live in Russia and have suddenly revealed in a comment of one of Steven's posts that they officially rekindled their love. Such great news! Molly and Luis Molly Hopkins and Luis Mendez, who appeared in the fifth season of the show, were yet another couple with an extremely toxic relationship. Getting engaged only two months after they met in the Dominican Republic, their relationship seemed to be doomed from the get-go. When Luis got the chance to meet with Molly's family and friends, he left a horrible impression especially on her two daughters. Admitting that he had absolutely no interest in becoming a stepdad, things got even worse with time. Like how when Luis got the chance to spend some quality time with his fiancé's daughters, he asked one of them if she was sexually active. Not only did this make Molly extremely uncomfortable, but it was downright painful to watch on my screen. Following what was a hellish 5 months, the pair decided to file for divorce, but the drama didn't stop there. Luis pretty quickly remarried in September of 2018, which was only a few months after the divorce. While he wasn't able to secure himself a green card during the time that they were married, he still seems to reside in the United States. On Molly's end, she had a run-in with the law after having an altercation with her 21-year-old daughter Olivia over a pair of boots, which resulted in a misdemeanor simple battery charge. Other than that, she's seemingly doing very well with her successful lingerie line, which has made her millions. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one guys!